Hello, my name is Dave, and in our last video, we took a look at how to implement a dynamic array, uh, more popular, popularly known in Java as the ArrayList class. Um, and uh, what we learned is that on the inside of a dynamic array, we have an array, and that array contains our various data elements. And when we want to uh, add an element to the end of the array, we needed to copy all of those elements into a, an array that was one element larger and make sure that that new larger array becomes the array, right? We cannot change the size of an array, but we can do the next best thing. We can make a slightly larger array and move all the elements over. And our concern is this seems slow. This seems inefficient. There might just be a better way. So let's think about some other situations where I might do something like this. Suppose that I own uh, compact disks. I, I have a number of CDs, compact disks on which I store music. Um, these are, let's say, they're even store-bought CDs. It doesn't matter. And uh, you may not have, you may not have heard of CDs anymore. You may be living in an MP3 fantasy world. But back in the day, we did actually keep our music in this hard disk CD format. And one of the problems we ran into is if we had 50 CDs, that mean, meant we needed a rack to store all 50 of those CDs. We needed a place to keep them. So let's say I have a, a f I have. 50 CDs, then I get a 50 uh, CD rack, a rack that's capable of storing all 50 CDs. And let's say I then decide to go out and buy my 51st CD. So I buy one more CD. When I do that, I might be tempted, according to this solution, I'm, I'm basically going to say, let's say, ooh, I need a bigger CD rack that's one bigger. So now I need a 51 CD rack. And then I need to copy all of the CDs. I need to move all the CDs from the 50 CD, CD rack to my 51 CD rack. And then I need to remember that this is now the CD rack, because and this one I'll, I'll literally take out to the garbage. And I'll add my new CD at the end of that rack. And I could do that, but that seems ridiculous, because when I buy that 52nd CD, I'm going to have to go through all this process again, and I'm going to have to buy a 52 CD rack, and this seems ridiculous. So what you and I, what, what any any sane person would do is buy a larger CD rack, or, or throw out a CD. Maybe you don't need all that music, huh? Um, but if I really anticipate that I'm going to keep adding more and more CDs to my collection, because, you know, there's all this good music coming out, new artists are writing new CDs, all the stuff I have I still really like. I get a 100 CD rack, maybe. And then I move all 50 CDs into that 100 CD rack, and I add this 51st CD. And in the rest of that rack is just empty space. And it will be a long time until I fill that 100 CD rack. And when I do buy that 101st CD, then I will buy a larger rack. But it's not going to be 101 CDs. Maybe it'll be even larger. And it turns out, if I want to be efficient about this, I will I will do something where I multiply the number of CDs that I can hold each time. So if I went from 50 to 100, I multiply by 2. So I would multiply again by 2 and now have a 200 CD rack. And then if I fill that one, get a 400 CD rack and so on. That turns out to be an efficient, an efficient plan. And we will eventually take a look at why that is so efficient. But for now, we're going to take it on faith that an excellent plan is that when you fill the CD rack, you double it. Um, and so back to our arrays. When we fill our array, we are not. Let's let's uh, let's clear this. We're not going to make an array that's one position larger because because that seems ridiculous. We'll make an array that's twice as large. Twice as large. I understand this is about the same size, but we'll just make the boxes smaller. There we go. Twice as large. And so when we get that that next element, let's say it's this one here and we store it in our larger array, we're still going to have all of this extra empty space, all these probably null values, almost certainly null values, um, where I store all that extra, where, where I have room so that the next time I add an element, I don't need to do this trick of copying into a larger array. I'll just put the next element here, and then the next element here, and then the next one here. And when I add that ninth element, yes, now I need to copy into a larger array of size 16, copy all eight into that 16 element array, and now I can add the ninth element at the end of that. Um, now if I do this, how can I figure out where, how many elements I have? Before, the number of elements was the length of the array. Now I have five elements in an eight element array. How do I know how many elements I have? Well, the number of elements I have 
uh, well, I can find it. I can walk through the array and count how many non-null values or something like that. Um, if I'm clever, I can use a binary search to find the place where objects turn into nulls. Uh, but the fastest way far and away is, why don't we just remember the number of elements? Why don't we store the size? So the size of this particular array here is uh, 5. I have five elements. So in addition to keeping track of all of my data in an array, and that array is full of objects followed by null values, I will also keep track of the number of actual data values in my array, in this case five. So with that in mind, I think we are now ready to fix this dynamic array class and uh, get this working. So dynamic array, take two. Let's see, for that... We'll write that in uh, yellow. Public class dynamic array. So this is the real dynamic array class this time. And it's going to have both an array of objects, although these are really uh, objects followed by null values at the end. And I'm going to have a size. I'm going to remember how many elements there are. OK, when I construct my dynamic array, it is going to be initially empty. So that means data is going to be an array of how big? Well, it turns out it doesn't matter how big. I mean, it matters, but I'm allowed to pick any sensible value as long as I can keep doubling it in size. So this is just the starting capacity. This is the size of my first CD rack. And I decide, you know what? Maybe one. Maybe I anticipate only ever adding one element. Maybe that's a silly starting value, but I'm going to start at one. And then let's see. Size. Size is the number of actual elements in the array. How many elements are in the array when I first construct it? Zero. I haven't bought any CDs yet. I don't have anything in my CD rack. I haven't stored anything in my dynamic array yet. Okay. Next, let's look at some of the other methods. Well, there's the size method. What is the, the size of my dynamic array? Well, that's pretty straightforward. The size is size. As long as I make sure to maintain the correct value in this variable at all times. So every time I add an element, I'm going to increment size. If I remove an element, I will decrement size. And if I do that, I'm guaranteed that size will always have the right answer for me. So I can return the size. And the, the joy of this is that I've now returned the size in constant time. All right, what else do we have? Well, we have get. I can get the object at a particular index. And how am I going to do that? Well, an easy way. And debate whether this is a smart way, I'll just get the element at that position of the array. And the reason I'm concerned this might not be a smart way, which I think I'm going to wish I could make some notes in my code, so we'll just move that to the next line. The reason it's maybe not so smart is if my array, and this, this is also constant time, if my array is, has empty space in it, it's sort of weird that if I have, say, five elements, and I ask for the element at position five, six, or seven, which might be empty in my array, and therefore contain null values, I don't want to get null back. I would actually prefer to crash than get null back, because if I get null, I might do something bad with that null. And if I crash, I might be compelled to actually fix my program and not call get for an invalid index. Uh, so we could, make, we could make this smarter and throw an exception if it's out of range, but I want to keep the program simple here. All right, that brings us to the add method. And before I write add, I'm going to write a little helper method. It's going to be called resize if full. And it's just going to deal with the resizing part of adding. And that'll help me if I happen to write more than one add method, which is actually my intention up here. So resize if full. Well, oh, why did I make that private? Because it should be the case that uh, no one from the outside can suddenly change the size of my array. There's no good reason for anyone to be calling this except me internally to help me write add. So that's why I've made it a help, uh, private helper method. So how do I resize? Well, first, if it's if it's not full, how do I figure out if it's full? If it's full, the number of values will equal the length of the array. So size will be data that length. The number of values will equal the length of the array. If size matches data that length, then it's full. In which case, there's I do need to resize. So maybe we'll say if size is less than data dot length, then we'll just return and do nothing. But otherwise, now we know it really is full. And because it's full, we need to resize. 
So we'll do something similar to what we did before. We'll make a bigger array, we'll copy all the elements, and we'll make sure that, to refer to that bigger array now. So make a bigger array. But this time, how big am I going to make it? I'm going to make it twice as big. That's twice the old size, twice data that length. And by the way, size and data that length are known to be equal at the moment, so I could do two times size or two times data that length. It doesn't matter. But now I'm going to copy all the elements from data from data into bigger and having copied all of data into bigger notice I only looped over the length of data not the length of bigger uh, having copied all those elements in I need to uh, uh, I need to make sure I hold on to this bigger array I worked so hard to create, so I will store that bigger array in my data field. So data gets the value of bigger, and now I have succeeded in resizing the array. Uh, so that's where we're maybe halfway there, and we'll see more about how to write these methods in the next video. I will see you there.